Good morning, this is Ken Horvath from the Sproul Center for the Arts, and this is Coffee Break with Sproul, Clay Edition, number two. Last week, John showed you how to make a cup. He made the cup by throwing a cylinder. Today, we're going to go 180 degrees from that, and I want to show you how to throw a plate. There's a lot of different ways of throwing a plate especially if you're watching YouTube videos or Pinterest or even seeing somebody work in live at your class or on a workshop. But my way is a little bit different, so I'd like to show you how to do that. Right here, we have a piece of clay already centered. John last week showed you how to center, so we're just going to kind of bypass that and go right into it. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this mass of clay that's been centered, add a little bit of water here, and then I'm going to push my hand on the edge like this to compress down the clay until it evens up here. Then I put my hand on this edge right here and I'm going to push it inward which pushes the clay out from the base. Come back over here again, compress the clay down until it evens up on the edge. and then push the clay back in and see how the clay spreads. So I'm shoving the clay back into it and it comes out the bottom. One more time, maybe two more times actually. Compress that in like that. Now because there's so much surface here, I don't want to dry it out too much, so I'm going to put a sponge in my hand so I can add a little bit of moisture when I need it. And I'm going to push this slab out, go back in, push that bulb out again, go back and forth a couple of times and compress the clay nice and strong. So I'm continuing to compress my clay. I'm getting to a point where I like the thickness. I'm going to check the thickness out with my needle tool. So I'm just going to kind of stick it in the center and I'm going to gauge how thick it is. I'm going to go around and just make sure that it is pretty much the same. Then I'm going to grab potter's rib, some wooden potter's rib, pretty standard tool. It comes in all uh, kits. I'm going to start the wheel back up. I'm going to take the round edge of the tool and I'm going to lay it on the clay and I'm going to compress with the tool a couple of times and get this to be as flat as possible from the outside to the inside. I don't want to go too far past the inside because then the tool is going to go against the clay and then we're going to have a big problem. Do that a couple of times. I'm going to add some water and then I'm going to feel where and there's any areas that I need to compress here. It's a little high right there. Everything else seems to be pretty good. So I'm going to push a little bit harder over here, lay up on the pressure as I go towards the center. Then I'm going to grab another tool from my kit. And this is a metal rib, flexible aluminum metal rib. It's got a round edge and a flat edge. I'm going to use a round edge. Put it on here on an angle, and I'm going to compress the clay. Now, what this is doing that the wooden rib is not is because it's metal, it will hone the surface, give you a nice clean surface so you can actually really see if there's any problems. Looks pretty good. So I want to now kind of clean up some stuff. So I'm going to drag some of the slip off, compress the outside edge. Then I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to just clean up and take some of the stuff off that. Another compression. And we're ready to go. Now I'm going to get some fresh water. 
clean up my wheel head just a little bit to get ready for the next step. And this is where I do plates a little bit differently. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my splash pan and then I'm going to grab a tool that I have in my tool kit. This is called a potter's knife. Wooden tool has a sharp edge and a bevel on this. There's actually a little angle that goes down this way, so it's kind of like a knife. This guy is going to go underneath here and is going to lift up this plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to undercut just a little bit to take some of that excess slurry out of there. Because I don't want to have too much junk in between. Alright, then I take the knife, hold it nice and tight, and on an angle like here, I'm going to lay it with the wheel going into that angle, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to jam it underneath there. You can actually see the knife underneath the plate, and it brought up a rim this far. Now, how far you want the rim will determine what kind of plate you make. Also, it's your own personal aesthetic you want a high rim or, or a lower rim. So I'm now going to have that on here and then I'm going to lift very slowly. I'm going to bring the edge of the clay up so I can see where the plate is starting. Okay. Put my splash pan back on. I got my sponge. I take a little bit of water and then I'm going to compress the rim just a little bit. And I'm not going to make any shape, per se, until I get my metal rib back out. And this metal rib is going to allow me to work this clay right here. So I'm going to take my hand, put it underneath, and make sure that I have some moisture underneath there, because I don't want to hit any, any uh, dry spots and screw up my, my plate. But this nice little round edge over here is going to allow me to come from here Go up the edge, and I'm going to make change like that. It is I established a flat line going here, and then it curved up and stopped right at the edge where the clay came off the tool. That little edge right there is going to be where I actually make a rim. So I put my finger back underneath here, and I lay this tool. And push it down like that. Got a little bit of slurry there that I want to take off. That way. I'll take my sponge and clean up the whole thing here. that's going to be my plate. I'm not going to play with it too much. I can refine that during the trimming process. That's how I make one. Now, before we take this off, I want to cut it off of the bat that I'm throwing on. This bat allows me to take this thing off without distorting it. But if you do not cut this thing off, it's going to be very, very hard to cut off later because of the surface. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to make it easy on myself by taking my feddling knife. This is a metal feddling knife. It could use anything, but I like the feddling knife myself. I open up my splash pan again. I turn on the wheel nice and slow and I take my, and I just jam it in there probably just about that far. And that makes a little groove underneath the clay where it was attached to the wheel head and then I can take my wire tool and I can do a spin cut and it will get all off right now and then I won't have to worry about it later. So I push down, 
the wire goes right into that little groove and then I just go nice and slow all the way through and it just spin cuts it right off with no issues at all. Okay, so I've got my plate. It's been sitting around for about five minutes or so, but I want to get this dried up a little bit. Not to the point of being able to trim it, but I want to apply a color to this and a little design. So I want to I can do this on my wheel, or I have a banding wheel. I'm going to put this on here, get this fairly centered, and I'm going to use a heat gun to dry it up. Okay, so I heated this up for about three or four minutes, just got the, the shininess to go away when I let it sit here for about two hours. So now I'm ready to do some decoration. One of the things that I want to do, this is kind of my, my trademark, is a black interior with some colors on the surface of it. So we're going to first start with some black underglaze and I'm putting it right on the raw clay. First to get the thing going here, add the brush and to start to paint and coat the interior. Okay. Just my plate. The black has dried up a little bit. Now I have four colors in these little squeeze bottles. Red, yellow, green, and blue. And I'm going to apply the design on it. So now put my plate with the bat on a banding wheel so I can spin it. You could do this on a potter's wheel too. And I have a, a couple of colors here. I'm going to start with the blue. And I'm going to try to draw a line. Let's just make a little blue line right here. Okay. Now I don't mind at all these blops on here. But uh, if you wanted a very, very sharp line, you would have to get a smaller tip applicator. Right now these guys are about medium size because it's very difficult to get underglaze to come through these on a regular basis. So I use the bigger tips. What I'm doing off to the side here is getting it prepped and then I come along so I have now a yellow. And what I want to do is I want to spin this a little bit and see if I can get some quarter cross, cross line here. Like that. Then I have a red. I'm going to do some stripes across the side here. That's not a stripe, but that's a little nice little drawing. Sometimes these uh, these guys stick and they don't want to come out very well. So I'm going to put that one aside. Grab the green. Shake it up. Green has a nice little line that comes out. All right. Now I'm kind of a minimalist by heart, so this is actually a little bit, a little bit too much. But I think it's kind of fun how they're all going to bleed in there and everything. So we'll just see how that goes. Now I'm going to let this thing dry up just like I did with the black. But I am not going to put the heat gun on there because I don't want the edges to crack or the interior or the interior of the lines to dry out too much. So I'm going to let this sit up for about an hour or so. Okay, so we're back here. We have our plate. I have my design that's on the inside here, but I've been away for a couple of hours. So what I did is I put some piece of plastic around the edge to keep the rim from drying out too much. The inside is, is a lot wetter because I was adding all that underglaze. So that's going to take a little bit longer to set up. 
and I didn't want the outside to dry too much because I don't want any possibility of cracking. So I put this plastic over here. I'm going to wrap the, wrap the plastic. And I'm going to show you one more thing before we put it aside to dry completely so tomorrow I can trim it. Okay, so here we are. Here's the plate. Everything's dry. I wanted to note that I added a couple of little interest dots here and there. I think that that kind of makes those colors pop. So, what I want to do is I want to lay this thing out, and I want to show you one thing that I like to do. All of this is dry to the touch. It's still a little bit soft. But the deal is, if you ran your finger across this, you'll feel that this line that I've added is slightly ri uh, risen or uh, is slightly bumped up. The deal is, is that that might interfere with the plate if it was a functional plate only. Taking your fork or your spoon across this thing, you might have some bumps on there. Now, if you didn't want to do that, it would be perfectly fine. And if you're just going to put it on a, a stand or on the wall, no big deal. But if you're going to use this as a functional piece, you might want it to be as flat as possible. So, you got one more step that I like to do. I like to take a piece of plastic, lay a piece of plastic over it. I'm going to blow on it here, just to kind of get it down. And then, you can take a brayer or a roller or even your finger but I like to use this guy. This is an old uh, wallpaper seamer that I found in about 1973 in my grandfather's garage. And I borrowed it, never returned it. <laughs> and I love it. It's one of my favorite tools. Can't imagine how old this thing is. But anyway, what I like to do is I like to use this and I go around and I push all the lines down. I don't push too hard, just enough to where I can tell that it's flattening out a little bit. Now, I don't want to do this too early because I don't want all the designs to smear. But I do want this to flatten out so it's nice and flattening. You can't feel the designs. So it's almost like colored clay being pushed into a black clay. You can then take the plastic and peel it back. Glaze doesn't stick to the plastic. And then you could just go along and you can touch the C. And it actually works really well. So, I spent about 10 minutes or so doing this. Went around and made sure that I had all the lines pushed in to my satisfaction. If you don't do a 100% job, it's okay. And I'm not worried about making little plastic lines on the surface, too, because that could just add to the ambiance of the surface of the plate. But I spent lots of time doing this. I'm pretty much done. Take a look at that. Yep, can't even feel the differences. So now we are done with this. We're going to set it aside for about 24 hours, but I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to let it set up so I can trim it. Okay. It's the second day here. Um, what I'm going to do is take the plastic off. Check to see everything. Oh, look at that. It comes right off. All right, so... I'm going to just transfer this over to another bat so I can take this over to the wheel and then we can start our trimming. Over, flip it over. And it was stiff enough to where I could have picked the whole thing up and did it, but better to just be safe than sorry. Okay, so we're back on the wheel here. I got the bat on. Plate is centered, ready to go. I've got my keys ready to go, so I'm just going to add a couple of keys to keep this from sliding off. I generally would trim plates or cups or anything that has a very sharp edge or very sharp rim, not a uh, an organic rim, as I would say. 
uh, I would just seal that right down onto the metal wheel head. But this one, we're going to just use the black plastic bat. And the reasons why is because I don't want to mar up anything that I've done before here. So we want to just make sure that it's nice and stable and we can get going. I use a standard little RB6, which is just your, and once again, just another standard tool that you get in your kit. And I'm going to set up and establish where my foot room is going to be. I also have a good understanding of how much clay I can take away. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more smoothing over here, and then I'm going to start working on the foot. Okay, so this is going to be my foot rim here. So I'm going to make a little indentation. And then I remove all the material over here. Do two or three passes and get all of this clay lower than the foot rim. Okay, so I did my trimming and now I'm taking my finger and I'm going along and I'm burnishing down the surface. Tighten it up just a little bit going around all the sharp edges making sure that there's nothing there that can scratch a table okay okay so I flipped the plate back over onto that space and I'm going to um, clean up this little edge right over here very carefully, slow wheel, hold my tool nice and tight, get right onto the edge, and just take that there. I don't want to touch anything, so I'm going to blow it off, or I'm just going to leave it alone. Go ahead and just trim just a little bit here. And then one more thing I wanted to do is this lip is flat. I'd like to bring it in. So I would have done that when I was throwing, but I made a decision just currently that eh, I want to do that anyway. So I'm going to just take this edge off very slowly.
give a kind of a reveal. Just a slightly thicker edge there. Just a little bit more, not much. Okay, soften that edge. Roll this edge down. Take a little blow. I think we're done. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my damp sponge and I'm going to hold it there just to finish off that. Got a little piece there, and so I'm just going to roll that over it. I don't want to touch any glaze. I don't want to smear it. And then we are going to be done here. There we go. All right. Got a little nine-inch plate. So once again, this is our finished plate here. I'm going to let it dry out for a couple of days and get it into a bisque firing. After that, put some clear glaze on it, fire it again, and in a couple of weeks, we'll be able to show you the results. So again, thank you for joining me today. We have many videos planned, both wheel and hand building, so tune in on a regular basis. My name is Ken Horvath. Thank you again. Be safe, and we'll see you next week.